What's good, fangirls and fanboys? Corrigan Vaughn and Kristen Latterell here, bringing you episode 53 of Electric Fan Cave on ElectricBeast.com. Pop culture exploded this week, and we're going to talk about it. We didn't watch the Oscars, that's not going to stop us from discussing them and their counterpart, the Razzies. We've got all kinds of movie news, including Alien, Aquaman, Deadpool, Ultron, and Spider-Man. And because you love them so, we've got your boy Max Peterson stopping by to give us his take on that big Spider-Man revelation. Ready yet? Get set. It's Fan Cave. Yay! Yay! We're doing this thing. We're doing We're it. doing this thing. How's your, how's your uh, week going so far? It's early yet. It is early yet. It's good. Tuesdays are long days, but... Um, so far, it's been a good week. Yeah. Can't complain. I mean, you know, Mondays are Mondays. Yeah. It's basically Tuesdays. the beginning of the week. It is what it is. It's always yeah. going to be kind it's of just... a, a little bit of a cluster. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. There's a, but it's been one of those weeks where, like, just there's stuff. Like, stuff just keeps happening. I don't know if this is what happens in the wake of the Oscars or surrounding it or what. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, there's a lot of revelations, a lot of casting. Yeah. It's actually very exciting. My aunt posted a picture of, um, so you know, Wolfgang Puck does the big uh, governor's ball meal or whatever. I actually didn't know that, but that makes perfect sense. Okay. Well, Wolfgang Puck every year does the governor's ball and it's like the thing, right? That's like the one that you go to. Yeah. And so um, I read an article about it. I was all excited because my cousin works at the restaurant in LA. So right. I was like, oh, that's fun. You know, he, like, he's all, and he always goes. And for me, <laughs> like, my cousin's very, like, quiet about his work. Like, yeah, he's a chef, mm-hmm. but it's, like, we don't really talk about it a whole lot. You know, I'm, like, oh, I ask him how work is. Oh, it's fine. Whatever. It's busy. <laughs> so, for some reason, for the longest time, I thought he was just, like, the guy that, like, cut the onions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Until right. it's come out That's recently that he's, like, really good and, like, is not the guy that cuts the onion, you know? He that's has not, more responsibility. Like, he's, than I mean, onions. that's what he used to do because, like, when he was in culinary school, yeah, like, that's what, sure. you know, and then he's, cut, but since then, he's, like, kind of moved up. And yeah. I guess it just never really dawned on me to think that it had, really. And my aunt posted this picture of him. It's, like, Wolfgang and his, like, team. And it's, like, Wolfgang and, like, five people who are, like, putting on this big meal for the Oscars. And he was in the picture. No way. I was like, what? Because it's not like there's, like, one Wolfgang Puck restaurant. Like, oh, he works at Wolfgang Puck, like, right. you know, in the it's... strip mall down at the thing. Yeah, you know, like... no, 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 no. This is, like, this is, like, a, like Wolf Wolfgang, apparently, my brother tells me this because my cousin would never in a million years tell anybody this. Apparently, Wolfgang, like, called him the other day. And Wolfgang was, like, having people over to his house for dinner. And, like, called my cousin was, like, hey, like, will you come over and make dinner for us? Like, at my house. <laughs> and I'm, like, oh, I'm sorry. Sure, Wolfie, I'll be right over. Like, what? <laughs> and so, and then like this Oscar picture came out, and I'm like, I feel like I don't even know this guy. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. And I'm like, I mean, I know he makes killer mac and cheese, and that's pretty much the only thing I need to know. Yeah, I, need I mean, nothing more than that. That's I'm you sold. Know? Yeah, you know, so I'm jealous on so many fronts here because I feel like Wolfgang Puck would be like a cool person to know. He just seems like full of energy. Yeah, and he's fun. got that cool voice. Yeah, exactly. Isn't Wolfgang for and then out? also like I'm jealous of people like a a guy who can cook well enough to cook for Wolfgang Puck because like dinner would never just like I'm like I have boxes of soup from Costco that I heat up yeah. for dinner every day. I mean I eat string cheese and beer lots yeah, of times. That's so that's what it comes down to. Uh, yeah. and so that's I just, really weird is but like, how crazy is that? That was, like, my big Oscar thing. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't worry about it. My cousin's, like, cooking meals for all those people. You know, I mean, and are they, I'm like, sure it's very unglamorous, for... hot, and miserable. But Yeah, is he cooking for, like, like actors and stuff? Like, I don't know how this works. I, like... I don't know. Apparently, I should ask him. I don't this know. Is I mean, this is... I'm not a very good cousin, which is apparently how what I'm learning from the story. Cousin. Like, is that? I don't... I don't know. Should I ask him? I don't I, I, mean, I guess know I, my cousin, so... Yeah. I guess I never should have thought to ask him more other than, like, I knew he liked to cook stuff. I guess we talk about other things. I would probably I don't know. Be that if I were close to my cousin and I knew we could cook stuff, I would probably be like, you should practice on me. Yeah. Well, I do love it when we ever we have something. I'm like, oh, what's Alan bringing? You know? But anyway. I need an Alan. Easy. Yeah, we all That's do. That's super cool, though. Fun uh, fact, everyone. Apparently, my cousin's like a super good yeah. chef or something. I don't know. That's brilliant. Um, and man can make a mac and Oscars. cheese, let me tell you. Yeah. So. The, the Oscars... But yeah, Oscars. Yeah, anyway, that was my segue. It wasn't very good. No, I, I think it was a fine segue. I just got caught up in thinking about food, which is my favorite yeah, I know. thing in the world. Sorry, I did kind of too, because I was thinking about that mac and cheese. Yeah. That um, 
the Oscars were this weekend. Uh, yeah, they I have happened. pointed out that I was, you know, taking a principled stand this year and being like, you know what? If we can't put people of color in the Oscars, then screw it. I'm not going to do it. I discovered like a lot of people weren't watching the Oscars, whether for that reason or just because this year they were just like, nah. or because they're super boring. Yeah, or because they're super boring. Who wants to watch know? that long? I mean, I yeah. you just watch the videos of of the. Yeah. I felt like they went forever this year. Like it was like people started tweeting about them at like five, and I was like, it's like eleven, and it's still going. Like, Ugh. how long was this freaking show? Um, yeah. And so, but it was kind of nice because for one thing, I heard that unfortunately Neil Patrick Harris kind of bombed. Like, oh, he did? Yeah, I oh. kept hearing that he actually was not super good. Um, hmm. And so I, I was like, I'm glad I didn't watch that. I would have been really sad for him. No. It's not like, you know, it's like you can watch like James Franco fail and you're like, whatever. This is. Oh, gosh, I forgot different. about that I know, year. that was the worst, right? That was oh. terrible. But like if I were watching Neil Patrick Harris fail, I'd be like, no, honey. I don't like that because I root for him. Well, yeah, I'm always on Team Patrick Harris. Harris. Team, Team NPH. Harris. Team NPH. That's the one I'm looking for. Team uh, Doogie. Team Doogie. Uh, no, I'm totally for that. So that that was one part of it. And then there were like a lot of comments and things that I kept hearing about that I was like, ooh, that sounds gross. Like Sean Penn asking about... Um, yeah, I heard about... You know, uh, I just try to ignore teams. everything Sean Penn says because yeah. he's kind of an idiot, I think. Yeah. I think, I think he's one of those guys that like thinks he's really smart and then he says yeah. things you're like, just be an actor. Just exactly. act. We don't need... <laughs> He's one of those honestly. people who, honestly, it's like I hate when people say that, like, oh, you're an actor. We don't want to hear your views on things. But whenever Sean Penn talks, I'm like, can you just act? Yeah. Like, you're just, you're not doing any cause your, like, favor by putting your voice behind it. Yeah, because he asked why they gave that guy a green card or something. Yeah, it was right? like, who it's gave this guy a green card? It was like. And apparently they're, they're like, friends, so it was like an yeah, like inside, an inside joke. joke. But I'm like. This is not the venue. That wasn't the place for that. This That's is not where we tell inside jokes, Sean yeah. Penn. Like, come on now. Especially a sensitive subject in the United States at this point. And as many people have pointed out, in the wake of, like, Eddie Redmayne winning and other foreign people winning uh, various awards throughout the night, it's like the inherent othering of the person who's brown as opposed to the other people who came in and uh, yeah. stole our awards. So it, that was not, that was not ideal. Um, so I felt good about missing that. And John Travolta was super creepy. You know, I'm just, there were, there were more <laughs> moments I was hearing about that were cringeworthy. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm like, I don't like it. I don't like feeling awkward. Like, that was one of my things about the, like, I love The Office, but the, the parts that made you like, oh gosh, please yeah. stop. I hated that. Like, I know yeah. some people, that's their kind of humor, but I'm like. I don't like those things. Like I can barely, I can never watch that Joaquin Phoenix interview with John with Letterman that everyone thought was like hysterical <laughs> because it is. Even though so... you know that he's like in a role. Even though, right? but like, remember at first people weren't sure yeah. when it first came out, and I haven't watched it since. But even so, it's just like it's too much. You're just like, ah, oh, I feel bad for you, can't. and I'm getting embarrassed. I know. My... I'm like, you should, especially when like <sighs> I. From what I could tell from John Travolta, he, like, didn't get it. Where I'm like, you no. should be embarrassed. That's even worse. It's like, you should be right now, but you're not. Like, yeah. oh, so man. He, he, like, Joe Biden super hard throughout uh. that show. And you're just like, oh, come on. Mm. Why are you being a creepy uncle? Can you just yeah. calm it down? And his hair bit? is so weird now. I don't know what's going on Everything with it. Everything about him does not look like it a just human being. Tries, I'm like, he was so cool once. Yeah. And now I'm like, now, he's, now he is the creepy uncle. And you're like, ah. Oh. Scientology, give us back Tom, John Travolta. Right, I said the slip there with the Tom yeah. John Travolta. You know what I meant. Give them, give them both back. Give them both back. Give us yeah. back our celebrities who were once super awesome and now are creepy. But at least like Tom Cruise is not like I think Tom Cruise is back on his meds and he's actually well, in, I don't think he's, he's actually on meds not, right because he would I don't be, know like, that, he was against well, that. Just, remember, well, remember it was the whole like jumping on Matt, the couch and Matt, people like Matt, oh Matt, you're glib you're glib. Someone, Someone left him off his, his leash there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but at least Tom Cruise isn't like, you know, he's not creepy. Mm -hmm. He's just kind of, yeah, it says kind of. There was off. a moment where we found him a little creepy and now he's yeah. like not anymore. Whereas John Travolta just like gets increasingly like weirder and weirder and he's like, <sighs> it's like the alien is coming out of him. I guess yeah. if we were to believe like Scientology, like there's our evidence. That's I, true. I see whatever alien ancestry is here through Travolta. 
yeah, that was it's not pretty. Yeah, so I saw that. But there were a few like good things on here. Like for one thing, the everything is awesome performance. Did you get to watch that? I did watch it and it was just so happy. Yeah. It was it that's the thing, is it was so precious and happy. And by the way, of course, this will be posted on the blog on electricfeast.com, so you can watch this yourself. Um but it's like, you know, they come out with like Tegan and Sarah bopping around and looking adorable and twinny. And, like... and it was funny be- and I actually don't know the difference between Tegan and Sarah there, but one of them was like too short for her microphone when <laughs> it first started because you couldn't see your face at all. <laughs> it was like completely covered. I was like, oh, someone needs. Oh. And then luckily they came out with them. I was like, oh, that's better. I'm like, yeah. I hope they don't do the whole performance because yeah, it was like right like, here me. Like, covering everything. It was so funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I then had the Lonely Island fun. comes out and it's like. I mean, obviously, we know them for a lot of very inappropriate songs and things yeah. like that. But when they're, like, having fun, they all, these are guys in, like, their mid-30s. But when they're goofing off, they look like they're, like, 13. Well, it's because they've been friends for so long, yeah. too. You yeah. know? And I think it shows in those performances that they do. And especially in something like this, it's like. Yeah. And so they were just, like, having a grand old time and happy as can be. And yeah. Then and the Lego, the Lego Oscars people. that they handed out. Yeah. Oprah sitting there dancing with it. And Steve like, Carell looked super awkward with his. He was like. Like, he didn't know whether he was going to have to give it back or he should yeah. keep it. <laughs> okay, I've got this. That's All right, here. thanks, guys. Yeah. But just, uh, yeah, just fun. That was a fun, fun performance. Yeah. So I'm glad I, at least there's enough. It's always I look for the things that they're buzz about and watch them later, you know. Mm-hmm. And so that was a good one. Um, did you get to see Common and John Legend perform? Yes, and I weeped. I was, I like, just trying yeah. to get through the entire thing, which I'm – I watched it like, th- I, no, no joke, I watched it probably like three times and each time I cried. Yeah, it was like as soon as I started it, I was like, eh, I know this is probably going to be moving, but I was like, I thought I had emotionally prepared and it began and I was like, water, hey. I knew, I le- like, I legit, I think I made it to when, when like John is just playing with the piano, you're like, okay, but then it lights up and the, I'm going to cry <laughs> the right bridge now. bridge is there. The bridge was there and I'm like, <laughs> like and then all the people, look at me, I'm doing it. I, I know. <laughs> And then all the people are walking across the bridge. It was so, good. It was so and common was just so great. And, oh. uh, yeah, it was. It was. And then amazing. I watched their speech later, and I cried again. Yeah, it was amazing and moving, oh. and like it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, I love that song amazing. anyway. So yeah, I mean, when it was at the end of Selma, when I went and saw it, and like the credits rolled, and that was in it, I was like, oh my Oscar. god! It was great too because I think it was kind of like what was needed to move you at the end of Selma from being like, I hate everything. Everything sucks. I hate people. The world is F. And that song comes on and all of a sudden you're like, nope, we can fix it. You're like, glory. We can fix this. Glory. (laughs) Did you ever see that old AFV clip uh, of the guy who's getting married and he's really excited about it and he keeps yelling glory? (laughs) But I want to. Oh my gosh, Kristen. I'm going to try to find this. I'm going to make a note right here because it's so good. Um, this guy, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's like this man and woman are up, a, up in a church getting married and it's like all of a sudden he's like kind of bowing his head and it like that's, you know, you can see he's feeling overcome a little bit. Yeah. And then he like stomps and you're like, what's about to happen? And then all of a sudden he's like, mm, glory. <laughs> mm, glory. And then he just starts yelling, glory! And the woman is just like laughing and like looking at like, I don't, I don't know what to do right now. Like this is happening oh, that's so good yeah it's it's oh. so wonderful it, like i think her reaction is like half of the fun of it is just being like what are you hmm. doing oh. you know he's probably like this in church too but oh, just totally. didn't expect it to happen like as they were exchanging vows yeah <laughs> like this is definitely the guy who's like all right pastor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh Good yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's that guy and you're like oh. so good so glory the song and glory the uh oh no I'm wearing the wrong headphones. You remember these headphones, Kristen? Yeah. These are the ones that start my iTunes randomly. Uh, let me quickly mute this so that it doesn't blast my ears out. Uh, this is what I figured out because the problem was, oh, it's starting to play a random um, Cars video. I was like, oh, is it playing Glory? Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> that would be kind of amazing. Uh I figured out last time I was like, I kept on trying to just like close it really fast. And then I realized all I had to do was mute it. And iTunes, every time it starts up, is at the same volume setting as before. So then it didn't blast my ears out. I'm a genius. But have your moments. It was incredible. And if you want to just like feel moved, cheer up a little bit. If you want a good good short cry. Yeah, this is the way to do it. Uh, And then what else did they have on there? Oh, and then Lady Gaga did The Sound of Music. 
Dude. So, you know what? Here's the thing. You, I've always, you've always known that she's got a beautiful voice right, because it's yeah. come through on some of her songs. Like, just... Yeah. She just rarely so uses it. When she she does rarely it. uses it. And then, yeah, when she does, people are, like, surprised. And mm-hmm. it's been a while even since she's even had new music, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know the last time she had a song. So recent. It's like she's mostly known for just, like, her shenanigans. And so yeah. it was really cool to see her just, like, come out. Yes. Yeah, st- like, her just- th- just her, you just know. her, yeah, just her, not wearing, you just know, lamb or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, and it was just so beautiful, and just did a great job. It just was, a great job. It was funny because um, since I wasn't watching it, my cohort, we always talk in a Facebook message, and they were like live booking this in our Facebook message, and uh, they are all, as I've mentioned before, they're all foreign. None of them are from America. Um, and they were just like, why is this happening? Why is she out here? They keep playing off all these people's speeches and they just gave Lady Gaga, you know, five minutes to sing a medley of songs from some 50 year old movie. And then I go to Facebook and like everyone is like, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I'm like, clearly this movie is an American treasure. <laughs> like, we're super into well, it. Well, yeah, because Julie Andrews is an American yeah, treasure. Even though she's even, British, she's not so. from America. Yeah. Uh, I can't speak for like the English contingent on my Facebook because they probably weren't watching the Oscars. Probably so, not. you know, there could that could have been super exciting for them too. I don't know, but all I know is that like the discrepancy between the messages I was getting and then everything else on Facebook yeah. was very stark. But um yeah. yeah, I watched it and she really she nailed, nailed it. it. Nailed it. And those are hard songs. Like and to go from singing like you know, the the hills are alive with the sound of music, you know, and then like singing Climb Every Mountain and like these are oh. in different registers and she's over the place. Um, I was very impressed. Yeah, I was impressed. Gold stars, Lady Gaga. Gold stars to you. You did a grand job. Me and our great, our this long musical history here on the fan cave. <laughs> I was in choir in fifth grade. I also had a solo, so there I can understand. <laughs> But kind of where you're again? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the baker with his tray, like always. <laughs> Same old bread and rolls to sell. <laughs> that was. That's it. right. I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Gaga, we're clearly in a position. <laughs> clearly, and me and her shared the, ex- the same birthday, so clearly her and I. Oh, are. I didn't know that. Mm. I mean, she's obviously extremely more successful than I am. So that's it's also cool. this is part of the fact that every year when your birthday rolls around, it surprises me. Uh huh. So have that weird thing about not. Well, mentioning just it. remember Lady Gaga's, and then you'll. Oh, that's that. going to be helpful. Yeah. No, I think I've got it at this point. But <laughs> it's like every year, it's like all of a sudden there's like three people who wish you happy birthday on Facebook because they know, and I'm like. Oh, Damn it, laddie. Really? I know. Very tricky. I don't like it on there because I don't, I don't like getting face. I don't like happy birthdays from people who don't really know well, or care. Yeah. But you also like will be like, hey, let's do something for your birthday. And you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, birthdays are overrated. Birthdays are, I don't know. Any, any reason to just like, you know, hang out and party is always good. There's so, that too. Yeah. We're gonna we'll just do like a Jehovah's Witness, you know, we'll throw you a random party instead of a birthday party. There you go. Have a Tupperware party. I don't know what you would do with that, but Yeah. Because I cook so much I have all those leftovers that I need Tupperware for. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they have some kind of special string cheese holder for Tupperware. I think I'm oh gonna be using God. that. Can you imagine it's like ridges or something, like individual string cheeses kind of like that they already come individually wrapped so i really don't need one yeah i guess you don't need one but if like you were one of those i bet there are hipsters out there who would be will like, you give me one second i'm sorry oh yeah go for it hey rachel Sorry. Hey, no worries. It happens. Um, uh, okay, so I can I can imagine that there's hipsters out there 
who would make their own organic string cheese or something like that, you know, like they would, I guess just mozzarella or whatever, but then they would be like, I don't want plastic packaging around it. And they would make like Tupperware things and just keep it in. Yeah, they'd probably make it out of glass or something. Oh, yeah, probably. Recycled beer bottles. Hand blown. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Only the kind of glass that you find you dig up in the sand after it's gotten hit by lightning. That's the only kind they use. It's completely natural. Sweet Home Alabama. It's a great movie. Ethan Embry. You're the first boy I ever kissed, Jake, and I want you to be the last. (laughs) People need a passport to come down here. (laughs) Honey, just because I talk slow doesn't mean I'm stupid. Uh, This has been Kristen Quotes Things. (laughs) Should be a segment. I'm going to get a graphic made for that. (laughs) Kristen Kristen Quotes Things. Obscure, weird, romantic comedies that nobody watches, but whatever. How about Boogaloo and Graham, speaking of things that nobody watches? Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so here's the thing. There's a, you know, for in the Oscars, there's the live action animated animation, and then there's live action shorts. And they're wonderful. And I really wish you could watch, everyone needs to watch these. And so the one that Corey and I were most excited about has Martin Mann in it. McCann. McCann. (laughs) He's missed a syllable. I'm so glad he's not here, I know. (laughs) Anyway. He's he is coming allegedly if Corey can get up the nerve to call him on the phone. Yeah. But he's from Northern Ireland, so if she's a little worried, and okay, yeah. I would there's, be as well. There's multiple elements of this. For one phone thing, call I'm issues. Terrible on the phone. Like it's Just, awful. I can't read the social cues of it. I haven't really used one since like eighth grade. I got I got a cell phone in ninth grade, and you know I've texted ever since. I don't get them. And then now okay. keep in mind, I've spent plenty of time in Northern Ireland. I can understand the accents pretty well, but adding that to a phone is a problem but people in northern ireland when you ask if they're if they'll be on the podcast the first thing they do is give you their phone number and then you don't want to be like okay but can i email you <laughs> like that would yeah be so call then do you me. want me to call them is this what the yes is? yes you should call him i didn't know this was on the table you, you didn't ask call martin mccann and of course i don't him. also know the accent either well but that's okay because it sounds better if you don't you know you can be like oh, sorry, I've never been there. It's cute. And instead of me like, oh, I met you once in Belfast. I clearly should know better. Um, that's now, anyway, the point is this. The point is. He was in a live action <laughs> short called Boogaloo, Boogaloo and Graham. And it is quite possibly the most adorable thing you'll watch ever. So it's essentially the premise is, and I mean, it's like 14 minutes long. Mm-hmm. Is it set in 1978 in Northern Ireland? And he plays the father to these two very adorable boys and he buys, he gets them these little baby chicks. And they proceed to name them Boogaloo and Graham. And they are really attached to them. And it's this a really adorable story. And it just will warm your soul. And these little kids are just beyond, like, Jamesy, I want to adopt. Like, oh my that's gosh, so cute. And it's like, so as with most Northern Irish movies, I mean, the specter of the trouble still looms over that place, you know. And it tends to be present in most of their media. Even though it's a very peaceful place now and things mm-hmm. like that. But, um, I mean, at least peaceful in the sense that there's not as much violence. There's still a lot of fights politically and stuff like that, but that's everywhere. Um, but in this case, so since it's the 70s, you're also in the midst of the troubles and things like that. So there are these moments of, like, extreme tension in this that's based also on that, you know, political moment as well so it's not just like oh it's just a goofy story about kids with chickens there's also this this element of danger that's in it and the stakes are really high and there's also the sense that these are like kind of a you know it's sort of a poor family and them having to make sacrifices and figure out what they can and can't do as a family um and it just ends up it's it's so cute and the kids like also which is one of my favorite things is like kids in movies like the more realistic movies becoming aware of things like sex and swearing and things like that and the way that plays into this is is hilarious wonderful yeah yes. it's really good <laughs> when i think in even the i the that element of that danger playing like you see them even there comes a point where they even realize like oh yeah. I, I don't you know it's like before it's not like, my little it's this isn't anymore. my little backyard that's safe with the this world I've made with me and my brother. Yeah. There's this, you know, kind of greater thing happening and I don't know, you even see that come into play. Mm-hmm. I don't know, there's, there's just a lot. Yeah. And I think the very last last line that the that it's narrated yeah. just will it'll it'll get you and I really think it's I don't know. It's one of those ones that extremely was just like heartwarming and you're like yeah. 
in a great I don't know. It just like it seemed like a very normal it. family in mm-hmm. a situation which was painful, but I don't know. It, I, they seem to have like found a little bright spot in a time that maybe was probably very not bright for yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. Of the time. And this so. is like as because I did. I talked to Martin McCann in Belfast a few years ago, and you know he grew up in an area called Divis Flats in Belfast that um, is like a, a lower class, working class, poorer area. Um, and that had a lot of issues during the Troubles and, you know, that he was present for and these things sort of hit close to home. And he does a lot of films and things like that, like 71, which we want to see super badly. But is impossible Here's the thing. OK, keep going. But, you know, these kinds of things just hit close to home for him. And people feel, I think, like this attachment, especially in his age group and so forth, that are like at the end of um, this experience, where a lot of the people I know in Northern Ireland now are younger because I mm. worked with teenagers there. Um, almost a decade ago. <laughs> and so as a result, like they, they don't understand a lot of the tensions and things that went on. And so I think these movies are a way of sort of like, even in 14 minutes, keeping alive a sense of like what that period was like and a reminder of like where their parents are coming from and where, mm-hmm. um, you know, Northern Ireland is coming from in order to move forward instead of forgetting that kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So seventy one also is seventy one, which I really want to see, and we it's very I'm getting very conflicting reports. So IMDb oh, really? said that it was already out in 2014, yeah. but then I saw something that was making it sound like it was coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, it's coming out like we were going to be able to see a couple it. months, right? Like yeah. in April or something. Yeah, and so but then I but no, no sooner than that, like was in it? the next two weeks, couple weeks. Oh yeah, you're right, huh? But then I couldn't, f- and I don't remember where it was now. But it was like oh on whatever. I was like okay, well it must be somewhere so I'm like look and I can't figure it out and then Amazon is not helpful because sometimes they'll give you like releasing here but I think they're only giving you the UK version which is like that's yeah. not helpful nope not at all but one day one day we will see it and you can expect us to to talk about it yeah that's um, so yeah um, but Boogaloo and Graham like you can actually access all of the shorts from the Oscars on Vimeo you have to pay for it it was what like if you rented it, it's about it was like four ninety nine, or you can buy them for seven ninety five or something. Yeah. And they've strung them all together into one kind of long two hour or an hour and a half segment or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you can watch all of them that way, and we'll link to that as well on the blog. Um, highly recommend it. It's yeah, it's great. I'm sure someday that will be available as a standalone thing too. But I think it actually it won a BAFTA as well. Like it didn't win the um, the Oscar, but it won the BAFTA in its category. So. Trust us. We have trust taste. us and trust the Baftas. I trust the Baftas more than the Oscars, anyway. You know, I could actually would might wouldn't mind watching a Bafta just to kind of see. I watched it once before. Where? How do you Northern watch it? Ireland. That was oh. yeah. so it was on TV. Um, but uh, yeah, it was like it was fun to watch, and it felt I feel like I feel like it'd be interesting just to kind of see. Yeah, the difference know, I between. It'd be, it'd be a good cultural study. Yeah, exactly. Well, I feel like it's almost, it's too, it's sort of like the Golden Globes too, where I think like people sort of drink and things like that and they're a little looser. Oh my gosh, it's probably amazing, is what you're saying. Just imagine. Yeah, and it's like all the people we love, like Tom Hiddleston and Benedict Cumberbatch. It's basically the entire cast of Harry Potter, plus the other people who weren't in Harry Potter, (laughs) right? Exactly. So, I mean, it's the It's the the cast of Harry Potter, then the people who were too old to be in Harry Potter, and the people who were too young to be in Harry Potter. Precisely. (laughs) That's who that the Baptist. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's fun to watch. Um, and then the Razzie Awards were this weekend, which I didn't realize, um, it turns out, so I was like, I didn't know that this happens at a physical place because I was driving through LA. Um, I don't know why I was in LA. Oh, our friend Andrew London, who has been on the show before, uh, he had a show in Silver Lake. And so I was driving through there, um, and I passed the theater. People get surprisingly dressed up for the Razzies. This was the thing. Who goes to them? I guess this is the first year they've opened it to the public. Um, oh, so just random people. Yes, yeah, so it was like you. Could so what did they used tickets. to do? They used to just vote and then hand it out to people, or what? I guess it must be something like that. And if you don't know what the Razzies are, the Razzies are kind of like the anti gold, not Golden Globes, anti Oscars. So they they award the worst of things, like worst actor and worst ensemble and worst picture and all that kind of stuff um, in these. And so. I mean, the, they must have been doing some sort of ceremony before because I have read articles in the past, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you've seen this too, but that say like, so-and-so actually showed up yes. and collected their award. I think Sandra Bullock did. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure Sandra Bullock did for all about she's Steve. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, which is 
That for, was, uh, it was the same year that, that she. Which one? Yeah. All about Steve. Yeah, it yes. was the same year as Blindside. So she showed up for both her Oscar and the and Razzie. Her Razzie. All about Steve is intolerable. Like, in. Yeah, and Bradley Cooper, not at us as bestie. <laughs> you no. know? This is. I mean, if you think about Bradley Cooper, like, basically up until the past three years, it's like an entirely different person. Thank <laughs> you. Know, it's like That's this is the guy who's in like Wedding Crashers and uh, Wet Hot American Summer, things like that. And like now he's Alias Bradley Cooper. Alias, yeah. Now he's a thing, like full on. Um, and so yeah, that uh, that happened, and basically Kirk Cameron swept the rest. He did sweep, which almost seems like like cop out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's so easy. <laughs> yeah, we know he did. But yeah. other than so, like, I, I, I'd like, like to know who the runner-up was. Yeah, if they were really thinking about it, like they gave Kirk Cameron all these things. I mean, if we're gonna delve into like the weird Christian movie realm, like I can't imagine Kevin Sorbo was amazing in God's Not Dead or whatever. Is that the one he was in? I have no idea. You know, he's like the teacher. It's like from that like email forward everyone got when they were middle schoolers. That's like. A student challenged a, or like a teacher challenged a student to oh. say God Oh, that God was what that movie was about. And, you know, I but it was like a documentary. Expanded. No, it's not. Oh. It's not. You're probably also thinking of Heaven Is for Real, but that was not a documentary either. Oh, okay, yeah. whatever. Like, but see, there's all these like kind of terrible, only worth their message, not worth. Well, their and only salt. straight to video was Christmas Saving Christmas. It was a straight to video. Yeah, wasn't? Saving Christmas straight to video. Like it wasn't even like a theater movie like the yeah. other ones. Yeah, like I feel like it should be. It had to have been in the theater for at least a day. Yeah, and not just in like you know Kirk Cameron's hometown. Like yes. you know, it just to me it seems like a cop out to to make. Kirk Cameron, the the winner of the Razzies, like all across the. Board. I think they just hate everyone. Just hates Kirk Cameron so much. Yeah, it's like it's popular, kind of hate him, so they just they went with that. But there were there were plenty of bad performances this year. You guys, like, we could have done better than that. Do you remember any of the other ones that were like? What did he n- not win? <laughs> he I didn't think. win worst actress. That was Cameron Diaz. That's true. That was, ca- but and for like two movies, right? It was for Sex, Sex Tape and and um. The other woman. BT Dubs, did you know that she's married to Benji Madden? Yeah. From Good Charlotte? You knew this? He got a tattoo that sh- I, said Cameron. That's how I found out. Oh, no. I knew because I heard about their wedding a couple weeks ago. It was, like, going to be a surprise. It was a surprise to me. Let me oh, tell you. I had sorry. no idea. I was a big Good Charlotte fan back in the day. I'll have you oh. know. Um, I, when my best friend got her car at age 16... The first song we played in it was Into the Dark by the Juliana Theory. And the second song we played in it was Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous by yeah. Good Charlotte. I, yeah, we go way back. And so this, um, this caught me off guard when I discovered it yesterday. So yeah. got Joel is married to Nicole Richie and Benji is married to Cameron Diaz. They both married up. Well, actually, I don't know much about Nicole Richie, but I like Cameron <laughs> Diaz. I feel like I kind of like Nicole Richie. And here's why. Because she started... With, like, the whole Paris Hilton thing, you yeah. know, with the simple life or whatever. And then I felt like she realized that was a dumb way to be famous, and she sort of stepped back. And then she acknowledged, because remember she was really skinny and everything, she was like, I have an eating disorder. Life sucks. Like, you yeah. know, and she sort of tried to, like, fix herself the best she did and just, like, stepped away. And I think she makes, like, a clothing line, maybe for kids or something like that. I don't I, know. I know. I couldn't. I, yeah. It's not that I don't like her. I guess it was just more of, like, I couldn't remember what it was that she does now. Yeah, like, I just know her name because she's Nicole Richie. And I was like, yeah. I couldn't remember if there was something that she, like, yeah, does did. Or did. Yeah. 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 And her Starting kids are really cute. Cool. Tell you that. Yeah, that, too. And so, like, I just feel there's some people that I feel like it seems like I wouldn't like, but I do, and she's one of those. Hmm. I'm like, I w- was not a super fan of her, like, crazy privilege back in the day, but she was funny on that show. And now it seems like she's so got her ish together. Um, so congratulations so, to both of the Madden brothers for doing a good job with your with your marriages. Well done. Yeah. It is funny to me, though, that, like, Cameron Diaz is in her 40s, right? Yeah. And it's like, she's waited all these years, you know, like, she's dated plenty of people. Justin Timberlake. Her, Justin Timberlake. All these different people she's dated. And in less than a Eric year Steve. of dating, she marries Benji Madden. Like, you know what? I bet he must be awesome because she must be great. Let's look at her list here. I mean, Derek Jeter. Okay, well, we'll agree to disagree. But, well, let's sure. just say in, like, a scale of, like, who people think are, like, attractive yeah, sure. and good. Yeah. Let's say popularity-wise. Yeah, he's a, okay. I mean, yeah, Derek, he got, like, his, 
he got like his own game. Or, yeah, like, he dated I think, the, I think he got the key to the city in New York or yeah. something. And, and I think they named Lila. Or, yeah, Lila. Is that what her name? Lila Garrity from Friday Night Lights. She he did too. Yeah. You know who else did? Oh wait, that was A Rod, huh? No, oh, I don't know. Cheater. No, okay, I was going to say go Chris Evans also dated her. Oh, see, she's she's there. You go. She knows what she's doing. Anyway, so Cameron went, Diaz though. Yeah, and Justin Timberlake, yeah. and there's someone else too. And it's like, I mean, she's got these like. That's really right high there. profile, really, you know, and then it's like, and then Benji, and Benji, Benji <laughs> like, you know what? So I think there must be really something about anything anymore. He must be super rad. I yeah. think there must be something going on there. I'm like, you know what? He's not super successful. You know, not yeah, not in like at least a super outwardly, not like a Justin Timberlake kind of way, right? But yeah, so I'm, I'm for that. I, th- I feel like now I like them both a little more. See, so good marriage, well done. Good job, Cameron Diaz. Slash Benji anyway. Raymond. Uh, so should we move on now past the Oscars to the? Oh, you know what? She dated A Rod, not Cameron Diaz. You mean not? I Derek mean Cameron <laughs> Diaz dated A Rod, not. So Derek we were Jr. both having it backwards. I, I think, yeah. I was like, oh, let, what? No, it was A Rod she dated, but it was Cameron who dated A Rod. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the site. Whatever. We don't care. We're yeah. moving on. Who has been shamed? Chris Pratt corner. Saddest. Chris Pratt corner. You guys, tonight is a final episode of Parks and Recreation. So if you've got a drink, let's raise it up to Leslie Nope mm-hmm. and her amazing optimism and hard work and just a really great show. Great. Yep. Amen. Great, great show. I mean, I don't. It was one of those shows that it, the reason I liked it was because it was one of those ones that really utilized its an ensemble. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it was focused on Leslie, but it had this, these, and it, they got better and they developed. And I just feel like they, I mean, go back and watch first season with April and then come and watch. Yeah. It's like she's still April, but, but she is she's a, a different April. April. She's a grown up April. And it's like even Andy, like go back to first season Andy and now come to last. It's like. He's different. Even Ron has grown. I mean, yeah. God, the, I'm sorry. Probably hands down one of my favorite episodes. I mean, is going to be in the top ten episodes that I love. Is going to be the one from this season um, when the it was Johnny Leslie Crane, and Ron. Oh, the and Leslie they had Ron, their yes. kind of like ha- like. So the season started with them being in a big fight, and you weren't sure what was going on. And I'm by the end of it, I'm like weeping. Yeah. And I mean, and I guess it doesn't, obviously doesn't get a lot. <laughs> Probably not saying a whole lot because I mean, I cry. At <laughs> this Lisa is commercials. a pattern, but still. But still, just good and it's like these relationships and these friendships have grown and it's just so beautiful and wonderful and it's just a heartfelt amazing show and we're gonna miss it so much because it's not only it's just funny too and it oh gosh and can we talk about how genius last week's johnny karate episode was freaking amazing they did the entire episode as if it was the final taping of andy's johnny karate show yeah was the episode brilliant so it was like from the beginning like i was waiting for them to like cut away and this wasn't going to be johnny karate anymore and then yeah. was like no this is how they're doing the entire this show is how they're doing so it had all the segments and it was like he brings them in for different things so like what's adam scott's character's name dr smarty pant well, meant, like his like normal oh ben ben yeah so wyatt. ben wyatt is like you know the scientist character that like johnny karate is constantly interrupting and thinks is boring and things like that and ron teaches them how to build things and make things and like uh april is like sort of your jack Hanna animal person but she's really bad at it so the animals get loose well no it's because he let the little, he, let, yeah, it he let it go he was loose, like well yeah. we're playing hide and seek and oh that's how it got out yep uh and so, which, didn't we talk on this show about that spider before? Is that the In clicky? One of our science... Is that the clicky one? I think it was. Yeah, the Goliath. Uh... That's the one that clicks yeah, through the Yeah, the clicky toes. Yeah, nope. That's Mm-mm. the one. The Goliath bird-eating spider. Yeah, yeah when no. they brought it out, I was like, I am pretty sure we've talked about this before. That's like so big. It click clacks around yeah you can hear it coming nope. after you yeah we can be done reminding yeah, me no i know it's like immediately i was like i am literally shuddering right now that yeah. is the worst it was now, terrible. Just imagine on a happier running. note you know who else they around. do is gary the, <laughs> the mailman they constantly abuse who's just he really i'm, I'm sorry i don't want to give it away because you guys really yeah. need to if you haven't seen it but 
there's a wonderful moment in um, the second half of yeah. Whatever. What's what's her name? Why am I forgetting everybody's names right now? I don't know who you're trying to think of. Who gets married? Honestly? Who gets married? Yeah. Oh, Donna. Donna. Oh, that one was so good. There's oh. a wonderful moment with Gary in Donna's wedding episode that, oh. like, it, again, it goes back to what Kristen was saying earlier about the way that these characters grow and change and things like that and the way that they look out for each other. Because in a lot of ways, Gary, Jerry, everything. Terry. Like Terry. He's kind of the Toby Flenderson of Parks and Rec, you know, yeah. and it's like everybody has grown to sort of like loathe him in a lot of ways. But to see when like those moments of like humanity come through from people towards oh. him, like you're just like, oh, it's just just so good, you guys. I'm going to miss it so, so much. Yeah. So we'll be you if you're wondering what we're doing this evening, it's sitting in front of Parks and Rec with a tub of ice cream and crying probably. More than likely. Most likely. And then also crying because tonight is the last episode of Agent Carter also. Oh my god, I know. That show Why is perfection. Why are they doing this to us? I this don't know. This is perfection. I don't even know it's who to so write an angry letter to. good. It's so I'm, good. It's so good. Uh, it's, it's so much better than I thought it was going to be. You have like to I was expecting me, it yeah. to be good and I obviously was, it has been, have been excited about it since they announced it. But it's so much better than expected. So much better than expected. Yeah. I like... And I was so worried about having any high hopes for it. And then it was like, it's so exceeding. Yeah, I and wasn't. I was letting myself week. be. Yeah, you were getting lost in it. I was trying to temper it. I was like, I don't know. It might not. It could be I, went, I went full Kimmy Schmidt on that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just go <laughs> yeah, You Kimmy in. Schmitted. You were dedicated to the cause. You were for it. And it has not let us down. It has not. You have to tell me, though, because when I watched it yesterday, I got like an important email and I like missed a bunch of the dialogue. <sighs> and you were like, you have to tell me if you see my favorite line. And then I was like. I'm. I know. I missed it. So you have to tell me what your favorite line from last week's was. Okay. It, it, it's <laughs> You're hard ready it's, to say it. It's hard because it, it. There was. It was like almost twofold. Mm -hmm. So I actually. I'm like. Oh, this is my favorite one. And then I'm like. Oh, you show that the guess which one. I'm like. Oh, maybe this other one was my favorite one. I'm like. No, no. <laughs> this one was my favorite one. Followed closely, but I'll tell you okay. which was the second place right. that really made it. So. Um, it's the part. It's at the very beginning when she's, yeah, and that's right when I started emailing. So. Okay, so they're in. So they're interrogating her, right? They're taking turns. The th so it's yeah. and she's um, being super Tom. Bam. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, so she's ahead. just being awesome and being, you know, and you know, she's like, oh, I just, oh God, I love her so much. <laughs> and um, the chief is like, you know, saying, oh, you and your Russian buddies, and she just looks at him and she goes, you think you know me? She's like, but I'm nothing more than what each of you has like you know, made me to be, she goes to you, I'm the lost kitten lost, you know, left on your doorstep to be protected. And then it flashes to Chad Michael Murray. And she's like, I'm the, um, uh, the secretary turned damsel in distress. And then it flashes to dent to, oh, I'm never going to, I can't get his name right. His Sousa, but oh, whatever yeah, his name Sousa, is yeah. in real life. And very okay. Yeah, that guy. It flashes to him and she goes, um, she's like the girl, the girl on the pedestal transformed into a daft whore. And I'm like, <gasps> Rock the mic, and she was like, you know. Anyway, and she, so she goes off on them, and then at, and then my next favorite part um, is when she's trying to convince them, like, hey, I saw him doing something shady, blah blah, blah doing this whole thing, and then um, the guy that she's like, so you expect me to believe that you carried out your own investigation? And Sue says, like, why didn't you just come to one of us? She's like. I carried out my own investigation because no one listens to me. And she looks at straight at Sousa and she's like, because if I'm, she's like, because, or and I got away with it because I'm invisible. Unless I have your report, your coffee or your lunch, nobody sees me. And I'm like, oh, girl, oh, she's just so good. And it's like, it's this mix of like being super confident, but then like knowing like, guess what? I'm smart and everyone ignores me. And yeah. that sucks. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm a girl. And that's even more sucky. Like, right. that's the reason, you know? And then, oh, and then just her face. When uh, Do you remember her face when he goes to put the vial back in the ball? And she kind of does this, like, like just this look of, like, oh, it was perfect. Yeah. It was just, she's perfect. She is. She's perfect. She's I can't say enough about it. Right. If you guys aren't watching it, it's the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life. Basically. I think that's true. Anyway. It's sorry. only eight episodes. Like, what are you waiting for? Re Seriously, it's so doable. You could do that in one day. Yeah, and it's worth it. I mean, like I said, we're just, I am so pleasantly surprised by how amazing oh, yeah. it has turned out to be. And I'm sad that it's ending because it's so magical. Yeah. Um, yeah, you should, be, you should be watching it. So there's that. The one, uh, the one other thing, since we are still technically in Chris Pratt Corner, yep, that sorry. I would like to announce 
is that Chris Pratt has finally passed one million Facebook followers. Yay! Oh, you know okay. we've been like weirded out by this forever. Like the guy was in Guardians of the Galaxy and he couldn't get past like eight hundred K. Yeah. I mean <clears throat> it's probably though because he posts like your dad. It's true. Yeah. It's like if But you I like think email that should be forwards. part of the reason why he should have more. Yeah. It's a very refreshing way like to that? do his posts. I know. And like he posted yesterday he was trying to link to some like charity thing or whatever. And he, like, totally ruined it. And it was, like, first he did the wrong link. And then he had, like, six typos in it. So it's, like, instead of, like, deleting it and starting over, it's just, like, repeated posts saying, like, that was wrong. Oh, geez, that was wrong. (laughs) So the posts are all still there of him correcting himself. Either he has, like, a PR guy that's just really (laughs) terrible or he's doing his own. Yeah, it's, like, he is clearly doing this himself. Like, he has not hired a firm. Yeah. And his hashtag game is on point, you guys. It really is. Follow him on Instagram and Twitter because he very rarely really posts to Insta, but when he does, it's like it's worth it. He's like twelve hashtags and they're all hilarious. Yeah. So so anyway. that is the happy news in Chris Pratt Corner tonight. That has happened. That's the happy news. Um, let's start our. We've got a lot of movie news. Um, we do. We're gonna take uh, ten minutes to talk to our dear friend Mac. About Spider-Man news, we'll finish out everything else. Yeah. So, uh, shall we mosey on over to uh, yeah. to Max? Place? Let's go see Mac. All right, let's do it. So, Spider-Man, he apparently is okay. Let me actually backtrack. Make sure that we've seen the sure. same thing. Did you see the nerdist okay. thing about this? Where did you hear I about saw? It? I heard about it on a few different websites, but I mean, it was just circulating the same news. Same. I mean, what you? I read what you sent me. Okay, so you heard the quote yeah. from the guy who basically was like, Spider-Man will not be white. No, I did not read that quote directly. No. Okay, I this was, that, um, yeah. this is what was interesting. In the Nerdist one, you know, they do like the video along with the, the article. And so in yeah. the video, they actually like basically cut to this guy. And I can't remember who it is. You would probably see him and be like, oh, it's so-and-so. But I have no idea who it was. And okay. it was like 95%. Will not be a white guy. This it's definitely really? not going to be a white Spider Man. So probably not Peter Parker. If it's Peter Parker, it's a non-white Peter Parker. But probably you know Miles Morales. Right, right. So what's your thoughts on this? Now that you've had the day to think on it. Now that I've had the day to think about it, um, I've actually been thinking about it a lot, and um, because we've been it's just something that we've been talking a lot about at work, mm-hmm. and I was kind of. Um, I was kind of in like what I've what I would assume just based off of who I've talked to. Um, I was kind of in the minority for a while where I was really like pulling strong for Peter. Mm-hmm. But I want to just make it clear that like I'm not. I, that doesn't mean I'm against Miles at mm-hmm. all because I love Miles Morales. I think he's a great character. And I think that if Disney and Marvel went forward with Miles as a new Spider-Man, then that would be amazing. That would okay. be great. The fact that, like, if they, it would really show their commitment toward their audience and you know being progressive and and not not and trying trying new things and not trying to, you know, like as much as I hate to admit it, Peter Parker had a lot of tries. You know, right. like yeah, that's like true. like. Like he's not, he's, they've given him five movies yeah. and even though I personally don't really like any of them, that doesn't mean that, that he should get another one. You right. know, every, Miles equally deserves a chance to be on the big screen. He's a great character and. Tell me you know, a little bit about Miles because honestly, sure. I had no idea this character even existed until a few weeks ago. So yeah, um, so like Miles Morales. Uh, okay, let me. How do I? How do I start? <laughs> um, I know, give me, right, a, so give me a nice a, softball question here. There's a. Do you know what the Ultimate Marvel Universe is? Sure. Okay. Well, it's assuming that most people listening know what the Ultimate Marvel Universe is. Um, not basically, Wikipedia exists. Ex- exactly. <laughs> um, so, like, all right. Well, just to be brief, it's like an alternate version of the Marvel universe. Um, one that's a lot younger uh, that started out in an attempt to really start all the stories over again in order to get new readers interested in comics. Um, and 
Peter Parker of that universe died. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a really big event, the death of Spider-Man. Um, I think that Marvel really wanted to kill Peter Parker in a, in a way where he was being honored mm-hmm. and not just kind of killed off for the sake of making money, even though that's definitely part of it. Of course. But like, like you know, they killed Superman and they killed Wolverine, but those are all temporary. But I think they, they wanted to really be permanent, <laughs> although he may be back alive right now in Maltimate, <laughs> but that's not important. Um, uh, but Miles is introduced as a way to continue the Ultimate Spider-Man comic with a new Spider-Man. Really, other than Ben Riley, who is literally a clone of Spider-Man, like okay. uh, there really haven't been that many other main title replacements for Peter Parker. So, so does Miles Morales have powers? Like, yeah, Spider-Man? he has his own spider powers. How he did was he bitten, go? He was bitten by his own spider. His own um, spider. Yeah, like he, it wasn't the same spider that bit the bit. <laughs> okay. it was a different spider. It was a different spider. Right. And actually, Miles has powers of his own that are really unique, like um, being able to go invisible Ooh. and a, um, like a, like a like a sting shock that he can do, like uh-huh. a, which I think is really cool, like a bite. But you know, he's right. punching you. Uh, so you know, they wanted to they wanted to well, a lot, okay. Brian Michael Bendis invented Miles Morales, who was who's written Ultimate Spider Man since it came out. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I don't want to necessarily necessarily say that Miles was invented as a response to this, but I think people would be interested to know that he was invented around around the same time as the uh, Donald Glover for Spider Man campaign. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, it's like the actor that you know from from Community that really want. I love Donald Glover. Troy, I mean, he's great. Yeah, uh, Troy, yeah, Troy, mm-hmm. uh, and you know Childish Gambino. Yes, uh, he. Had this whole campaign to play Spider Man, where he well, anyway, the internet did, and he yeah, you know right. wasn't he, he wasn't going to fight it, <laughs> but anyway, it, it ended up going kind of sour for him. Oh um, really? Yeah. Well, a lot of people were really negative about it, and okay. Brian Michael Bendis. I, I'm just speculating here because I don't know if this is necessarily what he was thinking. If he wanted to sort of, you know, if he felt bad for for Donald, because I don't I don't think that was the case, but I know for a fact that. He's based off of Donald's appearance. Like oh. Ben Bendis made the character like to honor Donald Glover. That's cool. Which is cool. But I don't know if that's like that was like why he was conceptualized mm-hmm. or even why they decided to like I don't even know if that's necessarily why they decided to make him black. But that right. was just I know that that's a part of it. Yeah, it seems like uh, it's probably fairly related. I, it it is. It is for sure. So anyway, I think that it's great that they want to do Peter. I mean, they want to do Miles. Yes. Because yeah. I think a lot of Donald for Spider-Man fans are really excited about the opportunity for, you know, fans of Spider-Man who necessarily aren't white uh, would be really happy about that because they can identify with this new, you know, this new you know, uh, diverse Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I think that a lot of people are going to be happy about that, that they're... Uh, that they're doing, they're going to go ahead with it. Yeah, and but it they means want to no st- Logan Lerman. No, it means no Logan Lerman, which is so happy. <laughs> I mean, and and the best part is if it does mean Logan Lerman, then that means that it's Logan Lerman in blackface, and he will <laughs> never have a career <laughs> ever after that. His career will be murdered. So either way, I'm happy. <laughs> that uh, is the weirdest silver lining I ever heard, but I love it. Thank you. I'm just trying to stay positive. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh but yeah no I'm I'm really I'm looking forward to it. If they do Miles, if they do Peter, I trust them. It's great. That a lot of people were complaining that if they did Peter, that they would take him back to high school, which right. is what they want to do. The great thing about Miles Morales is he's 14, oh, and wow. he's and he, he he's still a baby. is. Yeah, he's a child. So if they did Miles, I mean, no one's going to complain about him being in high school because he's never had he hasn't had an adult career yet. Yeah, and it's not uh, the like starting over and seeing the same thing over and over again. Right, that was it's, the brand new. it's brand new. Yeah. All right, so and, before anything, I asked you last time who was your dream Peter Parker. Yeah. So who's the dream Miles? You know, I I was thinking about that you would ask me that. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of an answer. Um, it's hard because you know, it's a fourteen-year-old. That's yeah. You know, I don't know a lot of fourteen-year-old um, you know, black male actors by heart. Yeah. Uh, 
it's like darn it i wish i did but i i don't, um honestly like <laughs> this is gonna sound like a cop out okay but because i've i have my own dreams about playing like x amount of comic book characters right i really do feel that casting for the role is great and i and i usually when people ask me that i usually say that i'm like well, there are a lot of really great actors out there mm-hmm. that I could name that could that could do the job, but I'd honestly like to have someone I've never seen before do it, right. like someone that they find to do the role, like someone that they think would be perfect for it, regardless of if they're really famous or not. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, Andrew was really kind of like that for Peter, where yeah. he, or Andrew Garfield, from like a one name, a first name basis. <laughs> you know, you... So, you meet yeah. at a party once, you're old yeah, bros. You no, know, we're buddies. Yeah. yeah. But I, anyway, um, I didn't know about. I didn't know he, who he was before, before they announced he was playing Spider Man. Social uh, network. Social network came after the announcement. Oh, okay. Got yeah, you. I remember because I went to go see Social Network to see what he was like. Yeah, to scope yeah. out your your betting like, oh, your Spider Man. No, Sp- exactly, and I loved it. I was like, this yeah. guy's gonna be great. It's, Water you know, was um, a great character. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. That okay, I would, I, I want, I'd want it to be somebody uh, new. I I'm for that. I mean, my my only thought, like, I don't know a whole lot of like young black actors either, or like young actors in general, because yeah, I'm a grown women, and that's weird. I don't watch the Disney but, uh, Channel. Well, I was yeah. thinking, have you ever seen that Nickelodeon show, The Haunted Hathaways? I've seen commercials for it when I watch Ninja Turtles. So <laughs> okay, well, I was like, maybe the like kid from that, because he's like really funny and. Um, adorable as well so you know i'm like hey if they want to use haunted hathaway's kid i'm cool I'd be cool yeah i mean i trust he's not hispanic work. though like so miles morales is obviously supposed to be yes hispanic, he's so. half and i think that that's important i feel like i've been um i've been focusing on on his black half but yes he's hispanic too which is which is um which is great a point i really wanted to make was that peter part spider-man as a character mm-hmm. his legacy is so important or, I mean, him. He is a character is very important to a lot of people, a lot of kids, yeah, a lot of a lot of different people. You know, it's not like he has a very like locked in aesthetic of a fan base, mm-hmm. and that's why I think that Miles is so important because it's like they could have easily had the new Spider Man be like literally a clone of Spider Man, like with Ben Riley, right. or just another white guy. But instead, they're like, well, you know, we should really embrace his sort of like multicultural appeal. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that that's really in the spirit of the character that yeah. they that they that they did that. And I think that if um, Marvel and Disney decided to go with Miles, I mean, th- it, assuming that now they have decided to go with Miles, yeah. um, what we've read, then I think that that also would really be great, like for like the legacy of the character that he that 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 the second Spider-Man also got this great movie yeah. uh, franchise. Um, I think that even the, like the most hardcore Peter Parker fans who are just really holding out for like a, a finally a great Spider-Man, a great Peter movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like even they can't really say that, that Miles doesn't deserve his, his chance to yeah. play Spider-Man because of how m- important he is to so many fans. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I've seen largely, I mean, even before this announcement today, so much positivity towards the idea that it would be Miles. So yeah, a I lot of people have for been For fans, saying. it seems like this is, you know, obviously there are your racists and things out there that are just like, it's wrong! But for the most yeah. part, I feel like fans are into it. Fan, yeah, people who really have a core understanding of the character, I think, are into it. Or just, you know, people who like, like casual people. I'm not going to say, like, only hardcore yeah. fans. Yeah, no, fans are like, into it. You got, all you indifferent people. No, um... <laughs> Uh, I agree. I agree. A, a, a quote from a coworker of mine was: "She was saying that um, that Peter Parker isn't relevant anymore." And I mm. I don't want to go as far as to say that Peter Parker isn't relevant anymore because if you're opening that floodgate, then I would just tear Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne to shreds. Well, uh, there's a certain degree to which that probably is true as well. <laughs> definitely. But I'm just saying, like, you can't, you can't, you can't just take Spider Man. Yeah, and then and then not forget about everybody else. Yeah, but I I will say that it's never been Miles specifically has never has never been more relevant 
And mm, mm-hmm. the importance of using Miles in a Spider-Man movie has never been, it's never, like, now is the time for it. Yeah. Like, totally. you know, we've got, I don't know, I've got a lot more time left on this earth. They might do another Peter Parker movie, so I'm not necessarily that worried about it. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm and this is, this is Marvel Studios, who's, like, doing a lot of really kind of, like, they're, they're really bringing from a lot of modern Marvel um history for their movies like potentially doing winter soldier as the next cap mm-hmm. um and um already having carol danvers called captain marvel and stuff right. like that so you know it, it, it's not going to feel out of place to just yeah. go to miles you know it's not like he's going to stand out in the crowd like it's going to be this like silver age marvel lineup and then miles it's going to f- yeah. it, it's going to look like you know, Marvel now, which is, which is great. Um, or it could look like Silver Age. I don't care, but um, <laughs> whatever the case may be for it. Thank you so yeah. much for talking about it. As soon as we Very heard cool. this morning, I get a message from Kristen. When I wake up, she's like, Oh my God, has Mac heard about this yet? So clearly <laughs> yeah. we like, had yeah, you. I, I had, I obviously had heard about it. Yes. I'm and happy to be back. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we'll yeah. have you back again soon. Of course. Yes. I'll have my finger on the pulse better next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, back to Kristen and me in the past. Thanks, Mac. Thanks, Mac. So good having you. I'm glad we got to chat. Oh, it's Not so in person great. again. Let me tell you, uh, Kristen and Mac did get to meet. We did. And bond yeah. over Star Wars and chicken and waffles. That's so true. It was good. It's a good night. It was delightful. Good night. We, had a, we had a grand old time in, in the City of Angels. I was about to say City of Lights, and I was like, that's not what I mean. City of Angels. That would have been cool, too, but <laughs> sadly, we yeah, did not get that, that far. That did not happen. Uh, Neil Blomkamp is uh, officially making a new Alien movie. That's crazy. We've been seeing, um, he released like concept art for this idea of like an Alien movie and everything, and I think everyone across the board was like, um, that looks badass, and was super into it and then all of a sudden he like instagrams another picture and he's like so i think i uh have officially booked my next project dude i'm so into it i'm one of the few did you see prometheus no and i actually have never seen alien oh you've never seen alien nope so i'm like very indifferent about this news i I know people are excited so i'm excited for those people yeah it's uh, and for neil he seems like a cool guy i mean he's only 35 years old this blew my mind i was so who made the first ones oh stan no ridley scott Mm -hmm. yes i almost said stanley kubrick (laughs) (laughs) that's not even close incorrect um and yeah but i mean he's only 35 this is not only interesting because he's making alien now at 35 years old but because like how long ago did district nine come out like i feel like that was a while ago like it had to be at least 10 like Here's was the- it like a I, like I feel like it was ten years ago. Maybe I'm overshooting, but it had to be at least five. In yeah. which case, oh. you know, that's like basically my age. He made District Nine. Um, what do you What do you see there? I'm looking it up. Yeah, I, figured, District- I could tell 2009. by two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. So that's six years ago. So yeah. Literally my age. At twenty nine, he made District Nine, which is a masterpiece. Um, yeah. It's an incredible, you know, apartheid allegory, and it's just a great movie to watch. Um, And so I just, I feel like I've accomplished nothing now that I know this. But yeah, so he's making Alien. We won't harp on this too much because Kristen hasn't even seen it. But um, I actually, I am one of the few people who actually like Prometheus. Um, I know that's Okay, and he did Prometheus also? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, in terms of alien movies that have come out. Oh, it's... Because Prometheus was like a prequel to Alien, right? Something like that. No? Yeah. It's, oh, gosh. It's like I'm kinda, sorry. It's with, I'm going to well, stop no, no, talking. No. It is like a prequel. It's just like it doesn't call itself that. It's like tangentially <laughs> right. related. But it's, it's like hinted It's like hinted at that. Yeah, and aren't they making a Prometheus 2? I have heard that, which is weird to me. I don't know if I'm, if I'm behind that necessarily. But I did like Prometheus. I'm one of those people who it's like even if I really like the source material, as like I will still like something that's kind of blasphemy. If it was fun enough for me to watch, you know, okay. so, yeah, you know, this is what I like Jurassic Park 2. Jurassic Park 3 is too much. Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic. I'm okay with, you know, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, this is coming out. So he, init- he officially announced that. So you guys, people who are Alien fans, that is happening. Um, Let us know what you think. We yeah. like to hear. Yeah, tell us what. I, tell, tell me what you're, yeah, because I obviously don't 
have an opinion. Tell so Kristen how she people. should feel about this. Tell me how I should feel about this, because honestly, right now, I don't feel anything for it. We also saw uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. Dude. Dude, looks super cool. That looks sick. He had a trident? He has a trident. He's, like, all covered in, like, tattoos. Here's the thing. He's always, like scary looking yeah, just yeah. he's like in like, ca- he's got like, rbf yeah oh total he's huge RBF. he's always like got a lot of hair going mm-hmm. on and he's got that scar through his eyebrow which is like you like, know i mean he could have gone that doing there. anything he could have been a child and ran into the yeah. table corner or was in a bar fight i don't know yeah, you know but it's like it just everything about him is just unsettling yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if I saw him and he's probably very nice, I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. I mean, he was on Baywatch Hawaii and he was very <laughs> non-imposing there. That's a good point. <laughs> if, the imposingness know? has been cultivated. Has grown. As yeah. he's gotten older, he's kind mm-hmm. of gotten more imposing. And yeah, just so he looks very scary and I yeah. always th- people t- and yeah, I don't know. So yeah. I was reading something that was talking anyway, about that's how it. like <laughs> well, I was saying that like Jason Momoa, in this like uh, in this very like imposing and sort of terrifying and like hardcore Aquaman is actually more of a return to what Aquaman as a character originated as because I guess what happened is like in like the seventies or something like that. I don't know if that's when it originated or when the change went, but at some point there was like a new sort of iteration of Aquaman that made him like this bumbling like. Uh, meh character that like now yeah. nobody is into and everyone thinks is ridiculous and you know things like that but that actually it should be a super hardcore character and that like thus this is actually sort of a cool return to form as opposed yeah. to an entirely you know crazy oh. obviously ethnically it's different but um but that this is like this is giving the chance for Aquaman to like get his cred back um, yeah, and I th- I'm and stoked. So on far, it. they're winning. So yeah, they are definitely doing a good job with it because I'm just like, I'm in. Yeah. I'm totally there. You look Let's at that poster this. and you're just like, dude, that guy is going to dominate yeah. anything, yeah. anything in his path, anything in anyone. You're getting crushed, and so I'm. Yeah, I'm stoked on it. And it was like totally. just randomly dropped on like someone's like Twitter, right? The picture. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think Snyder. Sna- Zack Snyder. Lee. I don't know what I was about to call him. Shnashna. Shnashna. Our friend Jackie Shnashna Farmer. put it on his Twitter. Um, he put it on his, I think that's where it was. Yeah, I don't I remember. So. I mean, I saw it somewhere else, obviously, because. But this is like the funny thing now. This also happened today because like the Avengers, they released a new Ultron poster and they just popped that on the Facebook. And page. they just, th- I mean, it looked like they all their, I mean, they just, I, I'm surprised they fit all of that stuff Everything on there. Fit. There was a lot. Yeah, I'm not in love Everything with the poster. Is, there's just a lot going on. And so. I like minimal posters. Yeah. It feels like there's way too much happening in it. And it like, it's clearly photoshopped together, which obviously it's, that's obvious for a poster, but in the sense that it's like, you want it to kind of look like everyone's in the same picture as opposed to you just like took random shots of people and yeah. popped them Stuck on them there. Or something. And, you know? Yeah. And so I personally, I like the character posters when they yeah, do character too. posters and it's like, I me- was it um catching fire? Right. Mm-hmm. That did those excellent, excellent like portraits and it yeah. it was cool because they made him look old school and it's all you know all it said was like hungry Games catching fire and it's like phoenix sitting in this like ridiculous and it's yeah. katniss <laughs> in her wedding dress and it's just these really cool just it captures who the character was and it it gives you it, the old timey feel it kind of looked like a what's it called the tin type tin yeah tin type tin type yeah i think that's what yeah. it's called you know and and so i don't know i just feel like they were really going for it there. So I feel yeah. like in these posters, we just slab it. I'm just kind of lazy. Yeah, just frankly. exactly. It like, I'll really throw these me... people on here. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, it doesn't give me a feel for what the movie is, really. It's just sort of like, all these people will be in it. As opposed to, like, yeah. with those Catching Fire ones, it's like, that gave you a sense of what this is about when you saw those yeah. characters and who they were. Yeah, you're like, you're like, yeah, I don't know. So, uh, whatever. Yeah. Not in love with it, but, you know, it's not cool to see a poster. It, it reminds you it's coming up. It's That's true. We're getting towards it. It's and... not like I... Not like I didn't know that, but yeah. Well, they just want to make sure we don't forget about it. That's why they they drop yeah, these things out there. Yeah. They put very little work into it. They're just like, eh, well, what happens is, and what happens is DC does something, and so and Marvel's like, well, they came out with their Aquaman, so we better drop a our you know whatever yeah, to here. make them feel stupid. <laughs> 
to outdo it. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. And then the other thing so, was that, like, the other movie news is um, the Deadpool casting, that they have Morena Baccarin from um, Firefly. Firefly. Slash, like, from everything. Flash. Firefly, but also yeah. from The Flash and from Gotham. Uh, she was in The Flash? Yeah, she's apparently on The Flash now. I don't watch it regularly. Now? So, yeah, now. Like, I think within the... I mean, how long could it be? We're still in the first season. So somewhere in right. here, she has been on... I just don't remember ever Flash. seeing her. She, I, she hasn't been on any episodes, I've, and I'm caught up at this point. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well... This so maybe she's going to be in this week's episode? Maybe. I don't know. I cannot vouch for this. But or this maybe I heard. missed her? I had a hard maybe time. I didn't realize it time. was her. I don't know why. I mean, I feel like I would remember her. When she was the alien in that alien show, V. Oh, yeah, and V. I forgot about that. Yep. She did that as well. Okay, I'm looking at... And up- she was in Homeland. I actually haven't seen Homeland. That's like one of those... That's Me neither. I watched the first episode and I was like, meh. Yeah. And I know people say you should give shows more than one episode, but... If they don't even give me a reason to want to watch it again, then I have a really hard time pushing past that. So I'm like, unless you leave me hanging where I'm like, I kind of want to see what happens next, then I'm oh, probably Oh, you know not. what? She's apparently a voice. Gideon. An oh, advanced computer okay. AI from the future. Yeah. That's why then. Yeah. I definitely would wouldn't have gotten sense. that. Yeah, I would not notice her, her voice. It's not distinct enough for that. But yeah. regardless, she's everywhere. Um, and so she's going to be in this. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm getting more and more excited about... Deadpool. I think also, well, it helps that I just read um, Night of the Living Deadpool last night, which is hilarious. So basically, let me tell you about this. Night of the Living Deadpool is um, Deadpool is in a food coma. He eats too many chimichangas. Of course. He falls asleep in a restaurant. As, As you do. As you do. Falls asleep in a restaurant, wakes up however long later. There's like a note from the proprietors that are like, Mr. Deadpool, you've been a great, you know, patron, but we couldn't wake you up. So we left, you know, we locked up. So hopefully you're safe. And he's like, safe from what? And he goes out and basically the zombie apocalypse has happened. Um, And the great thing about the zombies in this is that like until their brain basically just like rots away completely they're still basically the people they were but they can't control themselves so they're like really upset that they're eating people so like they walk up and they're like i'm so sorry i ate my cat this morning <laughs> like you know and they keep like they just keep saying like weird funny things as they're like you know tearing people apart and stuff like that um and so like this is just like basically deadpool trying to figure out like can I fight this uh, this zombie outbreak? Are there people left? And all that kind of stuff. And it is very entertaining to read. So that makes me, like, even more excited about, mm, about that's the fun. movie. And having Marina background because she's awesome. True. I'm for it. That and is think, true. She is awesome. I think I'm okay with Ryan Reynolds. I mean, I feel like he's kind of bland, but I think I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, he's really good in the proposal. That's exactly so. what I, like, that's my only, th- like, real go-to where I'm like, I feel like usually Alaska. I'm like, meh, but I like the proposal, so, you know. I'm like honestly that. trying to think of something else that I've, like, seen him in. I know I've seen him in things. He was in Waiting, but I didn't watch that because it was too gross. Yeah, um, I didn't see that either. Uh... We're missing a really big... Yeah, like, there's clear... Oh, well, I mean, he, he was, was in Wolverine. Two Guys, A Girl in a Pizza Place. Two Guys, A Girl in a Pizza Place. Yes! Oh man, I that loved that show. That was a great That is show. the big one. <laughs> I'm like, you know, something I watched for years. You know, yeah, I'm like, that, that, was was something that-, that was it. Two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. Yeah, that was a great show. So, that you know. That was a great show. I guess I, I feel good about Ryan Reynolds in general. And and he was Deadpool go. in the, like. So Wolverine he's got movie. the experience. Yeah, but and he I didn't talk in it, remember? Him. Well, he talked before he was Deadpool. Okay, that's true. Yeah. But, like, as Deadpool, he was just kind of like a. Well, and his fool's mouth was still on show. Yeah, it was, didn't have a lot going for him there. But I thought it was kind of cool. This is another one of those things that, again, it's blasphemy to people who are actually into, like, this stuff and want some sense of purity, whereas I'm not, like, super concerned with purity. I was like, he was just scary and cool, so I was okay <laughs> with it. Like, I was like, I'm terrified of this character, so I feel great about it. So let's do this. Yes. Yeah, so it was fun for me. Did you get a chance to watch the Power Rangers thing? I, I did teensy bit. Not no. I guess is kind of the point. I wa- I don't really understand what's going on. Did you frankly. watch Power I, Rangers when you were a kid? I did, but I don't know what this is about, and okay. I don't. So 
for and I kind of watched this little video with this weird guy that had like the triangles under his eyes and he had like a weird like rogue blonde streak in his hair like explaining yeah, why he was doing was, it like, so why are they doing this I didn't actually so watch I watched, that one I watched that one because I started to watch the pirate one and then I didn't have time to finish watching it because it was at work so yeah I just watched that one, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go back and watch this later. So it's like all the Power Rangers are, like, super effed up because they were child soldiers, and yeah. now they have, like, It's PTSD. like this weird take it because basically this video, and we'll link to this on the blog as well. In this video, um, you're looking at the – you have Kimberly, played by Katie Sackhoff, um, like, talking to James Vanderbeek, who's, like, holding her hostage, you know, and, like – and you never really think about this as the Power Rangers as, like, child soldiers, you know? Like, that that is a little creepy, huh? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. So, like, as a result, they're going through and showing, like, what has happened to these Power Rangers over the year. And they're super hardcore. Like, it's super violent and stuff like that. Don't watch it with, like, your kids or anything like this. this yeah, it's not, not the, like, it's not the Power Rangers of This is Rangers not what we were watching in second grade. And the end of it, I'm not going to give it away, but... I was like, oh, 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 my God. It's like all these things that I haven't thought about since I was a little kid because we know how I am about remembering things. Like my memory of stuff is terrible. But it was like I remembered everything and what each character was and all this kind of stuff. So when like something happens in it that's sort of like twisty or whatever, I was like, oh, I know exactly where this is going. Oh, my God. And uh, it was it was like a really good adult adaptation of like Hmm. what you would imagine like 30 something Power Rangers would be like and um so i highly recommend watching it so, okay yeah, if you were attached to the Power Rangers as a kid the original ones not the dino thunder or whatever else they've yeah since i don't then. i don't even know what the other ones are yeah it's it, only if you know the original cast of it does it make any sense to you whatsoever but it's great oh, all right cool i'll check it out the rest of it then yeah Kristen, we've got book club this friday we do a book club this friday and i actually have finished the book yeah I don't, I don't want to brag, it, but it's coming along. I don't want to brag, but I, 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 gar- I ob- honestly, it's probably because I've read Pride and Prejudice enough to have been able to like yeah. read it very quickly. You know, yeah. I didn't have to like read it for. I'm like, I knew where their relationship was heading, kind right. of. So I got to just kind of read it for the zombie part. But, yeah. um, but Pride and Prejudice, yeah. So zombies. we're talking about it. Yeah, That's we're talking Friday. about it on Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes. Um, so if you're around, we'll do we'll link to the Google Hangout on the Twitter and on Facebook. Um, so we'd love to have you guys join us. Uh, it's yeah, it'll be fun. It's it always a good time, a good time when we chat. Yeah, so. we always have fun whether or not people have read the book. But I think this time most of us will have actually read it. I've already gotten many yeah, messages th- from people saying they've read it. <laughs> so I think we're in for. for I think we're time. in for an actual book discussion this month. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So hopefully we'll see you on Friday. And, of course, we'll see you next week um, in the Fan Cave. Um, Yeah. So make sure that you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you want to, you know, listen to us. Uh, The place of choice, YouTube, uh, we're we're here for you. And we want to hear from you. So don't forget to drop us a line Um, any old time. We do like that. And let's see. Am I missing? Am I missing anything? That's the question. Yep. I think that's it. Sweet. All right, then. Yeah. So, for this week, Corrigan Vaughn. And I'm Kristen Latterell. Peace out, everybody. Take care, kids. Yeah. Whatever it is, I, I, I just think that, I just think that, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm mumbling. I'm, 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 just ask me another question. <laughs> well, I think we're out of time now. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> That's a perfect way to, you know, conclude your thoughts, though. 